Um, okay, so now you have your MS and MS MS data. What do you do with it? You can imagine that if you're looking at one thing, you know, if you're looking at one intact protein, you can spend a lot of individual time looking at it yourself. That can be like a whole paper describing fragmentation. But if you're doing a high throughput experiment, um, you need to use software <laughs> and you need to, you know, at least have a vague idea of what your software is doing with your MS and MS MS data. So in the core, we're using Proteome Discover 2.4. Um, we have peptides in a database and uh, precursor ions in a database. So you have a sequence um, from a genome or a proteome of the, the uh, organism of interest, and the software essentially digests it with uh, whatever protease that you have input, so typically a protease digestion, and it makes the database of theoretical precursor and fragment uh, peptide ions. Um, you then can put in your experimental MSMS -MS spectrum or your raw file, and basically the, the software is going to go and, and take this experimental spectra and compare it to all of the theoretical spectra that it created in a database. Um, then it does a, a score or ranking for how uh, high of a quality of a match each of your experimental spectra are. You'll have some sort of cutoff for that, uh, and then you will report out these positive uh, peptides um, in in some format, uh, positive positively ID'd peptides and proteins. Um, and this is kind of the workflow. We're going to go a little deeper, but not too deep, because you could. This is an entire PhD is is working on better better workflows of uh, mass spec data analysis. This is a data-driven technique. So um, I've included a link to this computational approaches in proteomics if you ever want to take a look at a, like an entire book chapter that talks about the history of uh, what people have been working on. If you ever need to kind of just look at a sequence of a protein or a set of proteins, uh, we are most commonly using Uniprot or Swissprot. Um, the number of uh, peptide search engines, you can see there's quite a few. Um, and in the core, we're most commonly using Sequest. Um, that's not a that's not a full and list. And you see so there's, there's a full there's a lot more than that too. Oh yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And this is just the search engine. On the next page is just this platforms and integrate. Because uh, as we mentioned before, it's not just about the search engine, it's about scoring the search results and doing an FDR on them, which is what we're going to talk about. And yeah, there, I mean, and there's constantly new papers. People are constantly coming up with R code, um, different ways to view and analyze um, mass spec data because the amount of data you can get from a single experiment is huge. It's a really good software that you trust. Um, so in the, the proteomics core, we're using this Proteome Discover, which is a, a commercial um, software which is integrated for thermal instruments, um, mostly, mostly what we're using. I did mention peaks in this previous one, but I'm not talking about de novo sequencing at all in this lecture. Um, if you're interested, please give it a Google and uh, you, you can hit me up later. <laughs> we can chat. Uh, we in the in the previous section we described how you you have an MS um, the fragment uh, experimental fragment and precursor spec then compared to the theoretical data from your database and if it's a, a hit it's called a peptide spectral match um, those peptide spectral matches are scored and a high quality PSMs are kept and they are assigned to specific peptides. And then these peptides are nested into proteins. So the search score uh, calculated by any database is going to measure the degree of similar similarity between the experimental and the theoretical spectra. So again, it's the closer to perfect you can get your fragmentation, the better it's going to be with a theoretical MS spectra. Um, although again, caveat, they're constantly coming up with new software <laughs> that optimizes for how peptides actually fragment in real life. 
So then to score these PSMs uh, and to give a, a, a quality control of your data, um, there's a couple of different methods of false discovery rates. Uh, and you need to think about this because in any search method, you're going to have false positives. And what you wanna do is decrease the number of reported false positives while not throwing out any, uh, throwing out as little as possible actual good data. Um, one of the methods of determining false discovery rates in mass spectrometry has been this target decoy strategy where the search database uh, creates a, a target database as well as a decoy database and searches your database using your actual experimental mass spec data using both target and decoy database. And then it can compare the amount of hits it got in the decoy versus the amount of hits in the target. Um, it's important that the decoy database contains an equal number of protein sequences. Uh, they're often reversed, scrambled, or concatenated from the target database. Um, and then you can set a, a false discovery rate uh, based the score, um, you know, where you one decoy out of 199 targets. Um, there, there's another mixture mo model method, uh, and this is actually calculating the posterior probabilities for the FDR. Um, and yeah, so, a couple so of different one, search this engines, one's using yeah. This one's using Bayesian statistics. Exactly. Yeah. So instead of doing the double uh, database search, it's actually yeah. just looking at the the best bet. Yeah. Yeah. So but, this this yeah. So I this think, is a really uh, good article. And I think that that uh, Percolator also uses this type of of model, which is one that we use in the core. And so this is this is just a, a, a really different type of calculation. The other one is more just a coarse cutoff. Um, this one this one has a little bit more um, um, population definition to it. So this one will actually yeah. look at the shape of your curves. It'll tell you a little bit more about the the type of data quality that you have. Yeah, and this is if you have a, a larger data set. So, um, because it's looking at the fraction of all uh, PSMs that are correct um, and other parameters. So, um, yeah. Uh, and just showing how it's calculated. Again, you want to have as little, um, you decrease these false pods um, in the data that you're reporting out and maximum your truths um, in the final results that you're outputting. So people play around with this, but it's something to keep in mind when you're looking at your data. If especially you're looking at something that only has a single PSM, um, you know, you can look at the fragmentation yourself manually. But if you're doing a high throughput experiment, it's important to have software that can calculate this for you and that you understand either the quality score that's being given out for the PSM or peptide um, or the PEP score.